bovines now what are bovines is the first question bovine it's basically related to buffaloes and cattle i think if you remember this much that should be enough so anything which is something like cow or buffalo these are generally called bovines beef and offal so what is beef beef is a culinary name for meat from cattle particularly the skeletal muscle so the muscle so the meat of uh, meat meat of cattle is called beef trimmings are usually ground and minced used in sausages etc so the question is okay we, we talked about the skeletal muscles apart from skeletal muscle what what about the rest of it the trimmings are ground or minced and used in sausage right the blood is used sometimes something called what's called blood sausage other parts are called offals you know there are other edible parts which are internal organs typically of beef which are called offals what are all offals the ox tail it's an offal liver tongue tripe sweet bread right sweet bread is nothing but it is uh, the set of glands pancreas and thymus together are called the uh, sweet bread tripe tripe is uh, it is a internal structure close to the stomach it has got a towel a turkish towel like appearance that is tripe and you have the heart brain kidneys tender testicles right and uh, the intestines are often used as uh, sausage casings right so the bones of uh, the animals are used for making beef stock so in essence every single part of it is used in essence categories of cattle so uh, first is intact what is intact intact means it is not castrated the intact non castrated male is called a bull right and uh, adult female cow that has had a calf or more than a single calf it's called a cow you have a bull and a cow and a young female before she has a calf it is and it is under 3 years of age it's called a heifer so these three are terms which we require to remember most of it bull cow and heifer and also then you you require to know about what is what are weaners right um, so the young cattle of both the sexes are called calves whether it's a male or a female the young are called calves until they are weaned weaned means they are taken off milk so initially they all drink their uh, mother's milk and when they are until they are off their mother's milk they are called calves and then they are called weaners weaners or feeder calves or simply feeders so weaners is a simple i want to remember so if it is a calf which is a very young uh, male or a female which has been taken off the mother's milk then it is called a weaner okay but the point is it should be between 1 and 2 years of age a castrated male is called a steer very important term here steer so a bull if it is castrated a bull is non castrated a castrated bull is called a steer so steer is a typical term so tip, so ideally you the the best quality of meat you would get either from a young bull or a heifer or a steer cows typically would not have a very good quality because they have already had calves um Weaners and calves, of course, these are uh, the best. Their, their, their meat is called veal, right? So uh, these are very, very tender meat over here. Origin-based beef. So we should know a little bit about. I mean, this is a huge subject by itself, but knowing a little bit about some of the uh, animals uh, which are known best for their produce would do us a little good. So we talk about Angus, Angus, Kobe. and walk you so these are uh, three brands uh, what known world across kobe and walk you these are japanese angus is more of uh, you have canadian angus united states angus so certified angus beef in canada and united states it's a specification based brand beef program which is founded in 1978 by angus cattle producers but there are certain uh, norms to it about you know what are the conditions what are with the regional base what the feed and so on kobe in uh, uh, kobe is uh, 
typically from Japan. And then there is a uh, regional uh, uh, indication to it, you know, that which part of uh, Japan. So, and what, what kind of pool. So, Kobe, Kobe essentially, you require to understand is, uh, it's, a, it's a part, it is one of the four main types of be found in Japan. Uh, those, those four are called, right? Wokyu is one of the four Japanese breed of uh, beef cattle in several areas of Japan. And uh, so they have the names also. Some examples are uh, Matsuka, Mats, Matsusaka beef, Kobe beef, and Yonewa, Yonezawa beef. And Mishima beef. So, uh, of course, you have Umi beef and Sanda beef also. But in all of this, so it's important to remember that essentially, all Japan, uh, any of the four Japanese breeds of beef cattle uh, could be called as Wagyu, of which Kobe is one. So Wagyu has a very, I mean, so what is so great about this? It is typically about the fat marble. If, if, if you recall it, last class, we have, last to last class, we have spoken about marbling of meat. So Wagyu beef has got increase in fat percentage. Um, and uh, it, it is also, also you have, also you have, uh, the 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 feed of it is specialized and so on. Japanese wagyu is known for very fine marbling. It comes from it is graded as grade A, grade B, and grade C, which depends upon you know what kind of yield it is giving. So yield, as you have understood, it is essentially the processed weight by original weight into hundred percent. The processed weight over here means how much meat is it yielding as compared to the total carcass weight. That's what the yield would mean over here. Each grade is then numbered 1 through 5, which is 3 being, uh, which is uh, 5 being the best, best uh, uh, numbering, num uh, num numbering over here in terms of gradation or number grade wise, which is number grade 1 over here in this system of Grading walk you grade one is inferior, grade two is superior to one, three is more, five is the most superior. So these grades they are indicative of how the intramuscular fat is distributed. The marbling, how it is, that is what determines what the gradation of the meat is. That's what a walk you looks like. And this is how the uh, one of the finest uh, meat qualities as far as work you is check out the marbling effect over here the distribution of meat within the uh, sorry fat within the meat is something remarkable uh, there are stories and legends that you know these beef they are given a uh, gin uh, massage um, on a regular basis and uh, they have very particular uh, diets of apples and so on uh, so a lot of stories are there behind you know how to get this kind of a marbling effect. So uh, the typical hallmark of this kind of a fat is the, the intramuscular fat that you're talking about. It's got a buttery taste right? and uh, high grade Wagyu it could cost up to $200 per pound right? and they can sell up to about $30,000 for one single piece. $30,000 in today's economy would be upward of 20 lakhs it may be 22 23 lakhs or so but uh, what makes the meat so expensive the term wagyu literally translates to uh, japanese cow what makes it so expensive is depending upon the gradation whether it is grade one or five five of course is more expensive than one grade a to grade c a is of course more expensive than c so if it is if, if it is uh, in terms of yield, it is a, a, a grade, and if it is in terms of grade, it is grade five. A, a five is the max that can uh, the, the best quality work you. Depending upon what grade it is, the cost would be determined. Aging of beef. So we have spoken about that. Aging. It could be either uh, uh, wet aging or dry aging. So uh, the wet aging is done by vacuum packing. And then the advantage is there is uh, less loss of yield over here. And dry aging, it is 
done in only in premium steak houses where between 21 to 28 days and uh, uh, the aging can be done or wet aging could be up to 45 days also so uh, what kind of what kind of meat what kind of meat, uh, first of all what happens during aging is uh, the enzymes so if you were to look at the protolytic enzymes this weaken the structural and myofibrillar proteins so the enzymes essentially break break up the proteins okay? and tri aging is usually done for ribs and loins whereas uh, uh, the other the other the other parts can undergo even wet aging also so when dry aging happens evaporation concentrates the remaining protein and increases the flavor intensity so flavor intensity is a major outcome of aging so uh, during this process molds can also form molds is nothing but fungus so edible kind of fungus can also form on the top layer then they can contribute also to the flavor so what are the flavor like the flavor can become nutty flavor nut like flavor and within about 2 to 3 days the signs start showing up yeah so meat from less tender cuts or older cattle can also be mechanically tenderized so if it were older cattle we can look at mechanically tenderizing also or by using small sharp blades through the cuts to disrupt the protein so if you were to uh, put in blades within the uh, large chunk of meat then the the fiber is cut up into smaller pieces so what happens is the protein it gets disrupted and solutions of exogenous so you have exogenous the other word before this was endogenous you see this endogenous over here endogenous is what is already present within inside uh, inside the meat uh, before it is slaughtered so that is endogenous and if it is added from outside then it is exogenous exogenous protein uh, proteolytic enzymes which are which could be as discussed earlier pa uh, papain from papaya bromelain from pineapple or ficin from fig they can be injected uh, to augment augment means to add uh, to the endogenous enzymes so endogenous enzymes are already there you could add in all of these to increase the effect of it for what for less tender cuts or for older cattle similarly solutions of salt and sodium phosphate so here if you look at sodium phosphate uh, it is known to uh, soften it softens the tissue uh, and swell the myofibrillar protein so uh, essentially it, it makes it feel more juicier so uh, and more tender so more juiciness and tenderness is the uh, value of addition of salt and sodium phosphate so salt can improve the flavor phosphate can contribute to a soapy flavor they say phosphate also has uh, another effect it gives a coloration the meat becomes it, it looks uh, pinker in color so in preservation phosphates are pretty often used american cuts of beef so we recall to remember the american cuts of beef so uh, this is the picture which you are typically required to remember you are required to re remember the labeling of all of this what is the chuck the brisket the rib plate both of these are called shanks you have the short loin the, the there is a tender tender loin the sir loin the tender loin top loin bottom sir loin round shank flank plate yeah brisket so uh, one requires to remember this uh, all of this because beef is the most asked about uh, or discussed uh, topic uh, in interviews primal cuts of beef yeah this one is pretty much same as the previous diagram so uh, over here is just more of three dimensional so as you can see particularly the it is uh, made of so you have the full loin over here the full loin is made of the short loin and the sir loin the sirloin it has got actually three parts to it you have the tender loin which passes from uh, a little under the uh, the the loin covering over here of the sirloin you have the top sirloin 
and you have the bottom sirloin the tender loin it passes through under the top sirloin and a part through the bottom sirloin primal cuts of beef pretty much same but this over here the uh, the the bone structure over here allows us to understand how the cuts are designed so the we have seen three diagrams till now the first one the second one third one are all the same this one is to understand the anatomical cut of the beef so if you look at the chuck this is uh, the shank over here the brisket the rib short loin loin uh, the whole thing the short loin and the uh, sirloin together is called the loin in the sirloin you have three parts again the top sirloin the bottom sirloin and below it you have the uh, fillet or the tender loin this is the flank plate and uh, this small little part called tip over here this is the round the hind leg uh, part of it is the round of course this also is the shank over here four quarters of rib so there are three uh, there are uh, there, there are essentially four quarters of rib uh, and two quarters from each side so the carcass is first split into two vertically it is split into two and then each part is divided into two the front part and the uh, back part so the front part is called the fore quarter right so what what does that comprise of so you have the the neck the ribs the uh, uh, you know a part of the brisket the shank that would all be a part of the fore quarters so what is this chuck is the chuck is one of the main sources of bone in chuck uh, the chuck is one of the main parts of the fore quarter cuts and then you have the rib the brisket and the fore shank yeah and the plate so that is all that one requires to remember over here we also have given the different cuts so for chuck we have uh, they are used for you know bone in chuck steaks or roasts right and then for rib you have uh, prime rib so this is a major cut that one should remember and ribeye steaks important so you see uh, why, why some are important some are less important is this is one of the best qualities of meat as compared to chuck now chuck is not a, a very good quality meat in terms of being tender ribs are more sought after and costlier than chuck is brisket brisket is more used for bar bar barbecue again it's not prime meat <coughs> nor is four shank four shank is used more for stewing see the method of cooking that is a clear indication of uh, what kind of meat it is so if it is used for stewing why would it be stewed and why not grilled the answer is that it is much more muscular much more used muscle so you have more connective tissues over here and so the four shank is actually used uh, more by stewing and for soups there's a product called osobuko about which we'll talk about a little later which is a typical four shank product right okay so it is usually not served any other way because it is one of the toughest cuts of toughest of cuts right the plate plate is the other source of short ribs short ribs are uh, an interesting cut that we shall be talking about uh, pretty sought after cut not so expensive but pretty sought after cut uh, they are also used for pot roasting uh, outside the skirt there is something called skirt steak also about which we shall be talking which is used for fajitas fajitas are a mexican uh, wrap preparation essentially uh, they have your know, tortillas with uh, these uh, skirt steak or a flank steak which have been grilled and then you know cut into strips Uh, that's what uh, fajitas are filled with uh, so that is uh, th these are the typical parts of the four quarters so we spoke about the four quarter and now we come to the uh, subprimal cuts so subprimal cuts are the primal cuts are cut into subprimal cuts so the these major parts that we spoke about the the let's say if, if you are spoken about the loin or if you are talking about the sirloin or the plate or the round or the brisket or the rib whatever it is these are all primal cuts 
which is the major chunkier cuts and these are for the subdivided into subprimal cuts of beef okay so subprimal of beef they could include the top round the whole tenderloin the ribeye these are subprimal cuts these are parts of the primal cut primal cuts so these are subprimal cuts so here you have uh, your uh, beef rib steak you have rib ready for roast right and this is the chuck over here and in the chuck you have uh, the boneless separated into blade clawed and arm so you have the blade clawed and arm divided so this is the arm the last part this one is the arm right and uh, i would not be able to at this point say which one is the blade and which one is the uh, clawed so one of these is the blade and one of this is the clawed hind quarters so we had spoken about the hind quarters we have spoken about the four quarters now we talk about the hind quarter what is the hind quarter after you divide a carcass split a carcass vertically into two the first half from the neck end uh, towards uh, till the rib that is the four quarter and the portion which is after it which includes your short loin your uh, uh, sorry, uh, your, your, your your the the whole of the loin part which is the um, uh upper sir loin the lower sir loin the short loin uh under with your tender loin round uh hind shank all of these are part of the hind quarter cuts so first of all let's start with the short loin the short loin it is famous for the t bone and the porter house steaks both of these are very important cuts and we shall be talking about this a little later please remember the terms t bone steak and porter house steak the important point is this comes from short loin so just for you to remember the loin is a very important area and the loin you have the short loin and the sir loin so now we talk about sir loin it is the sir loin is little less less tender than short loin but more flavorful this is something we require to remember that sir loin is little less tender but more flavorful it can be further divided into top sir loin as we have seen in the diagram and i have explained and bottom sir loin so the top part of it the one which is closer to the spine is a top sir loin and the other part is the bottom sir loin and you have the tender loin which runs a layer below the uh, below the uh, sir loin so uh, the, the the tender loin we shall discuss about the structure of all of this but it is the most tender part uh, tender loin is also called the fillet so tender loin is actually the most tender part of beef and uh, also the most expensive uh, part so it is the most tender and um, it can be cut into different parts so this is by itself a subprimal cut right which a subprimal is uh, so the the the, the it, it's a subprimal of the loin the loin is a primal cut and the tender loin is a subprimal of that right so this the tender loin can be further be cut into filet mignon tournadoes tender loin steak right uh, etc and this product over here beef wellington this is actually uh, a product in which the tender loin is kept whole it is a uh, the wrapped within a wrapped in liver or in mushrooms goose liver or in mushroom and then it is wrapped further in a puff pastry and it is baked so that is a, a beef wellington round the round is uh, from the upper leg of the beef upper as in i'm talking about the hind leg the upper part of beef uh, it upper part of the leg that is the round not upper part of beef the hind quarter it is part from the hind quarter and uh, the upper part of the leg that is the round so it is lean what does lean mean it has got less amount of fat to it moderately tough it means it is a exercise muscle over here lower fat which means it is less of marbling right so again what does all of this mean lean moderately tough lower fat so it requires a 
moist method of cooking and not a dry method it so something like a something like typically a grilling may not be the right method for uh, cut like a, like the round so some of the uh, representative cuts are a round steak eye of round top round bottom round uh, etc these are some of the representative cuts of uh, beef over here sorry of of round of the round of beef over here flank flank is a thin uh, sheet of meat and it is used mostly for uh, grinding why why it will be ground it will be ground ground for patties you know for making sausage meat and so on except for the long and flat flank steak so you also have a concept of flank steak when you talk about steaks afterwards we were talking a little bit about the flank steak also right and then you have got uh, the inside skirt steak so you have two you have got two kind of steaks over here the the flat flank steak and the inside skirt steak which are also used for fajitas sub primal cuts of the hind quarter right so earlier we had spoken about sub primal cuts of the fore quarter now we talk about the sub primal cuts of the hind quarter so this is the beef loin the beef loin by itself is made of the short loin and the uh, sir loin together they are made of the, uh, uh, the the beef loin so this is the short loin and when if i were to if i were to cut it across uh, in this fashion if i were to take out the slice then what i would be getting is one of this i would either get a t bone steak or a porterhouse steak so a t bone steak is so the initial the first part you see there is a bone over here which is a part of the cut and this cut so when you cut it from here what you get is a t bone steak as you go behind this t bone it disappears and the bone structure is different and there what you have is a porterhouse steak now what is interesting is this t bone and this porterhouse steak they have a part of the tenderloin usually in it and we shall be talking a little more about it once we uh, speak about the different steaks but this is what the tenderloin looks like the tenderloin uh, the um, the tip is towards the short line and the hind is more towards the uh, sir line so that is important tip is towards the uh, short line so which means your t bone steak would have a smaller part of the tip we shall come to that when you come to the sub primal cuts boneless strip loin so uh, strip loin is the loin of which we have taken off the tender loin so and of course if you have deboned it then it is boneless strip loin this is the beef outside bottom round so the round it's a cut from the round beef round steak uh, cut on the bone you see this is the bone over here the cut on the bone of the beef this is a beef round steak over here this is uh, the shank cross cut of the sh uh, beef shank and this is a beef shank steak over here beef knuckle and trimmed short rib so the term short ribs comes from the fact that the cut of meat contains only a portion of each long beef rib short ribs are taken it is taken from the brisket or the chuck or the plate or the rib areas of denoted are a short portion of the rib bone right a short portion of the rib bone so uh, of course it is not the bone there is meat which is covering the bone right and the meat varies in thickness depending upon where it is taken from so there are two major kinds of cuts flanken and english which i shall just be showing um, uh, typically how they look uh, i'll just be showing yeah so this is your flanken cut now flanken cut over here is this is across multiple ribs so what the size of it typically about 6 inches that is the size of, size size of it so flanken is the rib cut which is across the rib bones right it could be about half an inch to 1 inch thick and uh, the other cut is the english cut which is typically the rib bone by itself so now if you look at it this bone is there this is a single bone the single bone is cut 
the meat around the meat is there around the single bone as compared to this one where the meat is across multiple bones so you have one chunk with multiple pieces of small chunks of bones over here of multiple ribs it totally depends on whether the direction if you are cutting along the ribs then what you get is the english style if you are doing cutting across the ribs then what you get is the flanken style So this is what the English style uh, short rib looks like. This is what it looks like. As you can see, we have a single rib over here. See, these are all single ribs over here. They are coated with meat. Um, I shall have to repeat. Steak. So steak is a meat which is generally sliced across muscle fibers. If this is the direction of the muscle fibers, then this is across. So you cut it across. So when you cut you have only a small section of the muscle fiber over here you see this this is a small section of the muscle fiber when you cut so you see the amount of fiber the size of the fiber in this particular cut of meat it becomes smaller so it becomes easier for us to chew that is how all steak normally is steaks right um, which are across the, but there are exceptions and the exceptions are skirt steak plank steak and uh, silver finger steak these are ex exceptions so typically here the meat is sliced parallel to the fibers what is parallel to the fibers means if this is the direction of the fiber then the cut also also is in this direction so it is across the length of the fiber and this uh, typically is because the thickness of the meat is itself uh, not too much in this particular zone which is why the direction of the fiber is what we go along with in these particular exceptions so what are these the skirt steak is there if the flank steak the skirt steak is from the plate from the plate part of beef the flank steak uh, the flank steak is from the abdominal muscles steaks are usually grilled but they can be pan fried also it is often grilled in an attempt to replicate the flavor of steak cooked over glowing charcoal. So typically barbecue, glowing charcoal is we are talking about a barbecue or an open fire uh, kind of a cooking. So uh, that uh, to, to replicate that grilling happens or pan frying happens. So steak can also be cooked in sauce such as steak and kidney pie or minced um, and formed into patties such as hamburgers. Yeah. So you have ribeye steak. Ribeye steak is, as you can make out, it is from the rib. And um, the ribeye, it is, it spans from the rib six through rib twelve, which means it is from this portion of the beef, rib six through rib six through rib twelve. This, this is what it is. I'm sorry. It will be from this portion, this whole portion, rib six through. Rib 12. Why, why do we see the whole portion? Because this cut is between uh, rib 5 and rib 6. So from rib 6 to rib 12. And this cut is rib 12. The short loin, it continues, uh, uh, it, it has a part of the rib 13 uh, to it. So, um, yeah, so the rib steak, it is from rib 6 through rib 12. And uh, there are other names for it, uh, Delmonico Steak, uh, Scotch Filet Beauty, Steak Market, or Steak Spencer, or Steak Anthrocot. These are all alternative steak names for the ribeye steak. And the weight of it can be between 8 ounces to several pounds. So what does 8 ounces mean? 1 ounce is about 30 grams, 8 ounces would be about 240 grams, 8 ounces. A typical cut is it should be about one inch thick and it will be uh, in a restaurant it will weigh typically between 16 and 20 ounces so 16 ounces is 16 is 480 grams um, and that's a pretty large chunk actually once you look at the picture you can make out why it is so steaks between one to two inches are thick and easiest to cook properly this is what it looks like it is a cut of meat um, adjoining the rib it does not need to include the rib but it is the meat you see over here over here the meat is adjoining the rib and this is a grilled rib 
uh, grilled uh, ribeye steak. Uh, just that over here, you have the bone. You see, this is the bone over here. This is the rib over here. The part of the rib is over here. Below this also, there must have been the rib portion, but that would have gone in for other short ribs. We spoke, we spoke about short ribs before this. That would have gone in for short ribs. Pretty large and chunky, and which is why 480 grams is not an unusual weight. Skirt steak. So skirt steak comes from the plate. Here is the plate. And from the plate, you have the skirt steak. So it's a cut of beef steak from the plate, long flat price for flavor than tenderness. The tenderness is unlikely to happen because it's an exercise part and it is a flavorful, flavorful part. As discussed earlier, flank steak, plate steaks, these are typically used more for fajitas. So uh, there are two inside skirt steaks also. You have the skirt steak and you have got, got, got the inside skirt steak also, which means it is an inner part of it. And uh, the skirt steak, it is, it again weighs similarly about 16 to 17 uh, uh, ounces. Yeah, that's what a skirt steak looks like. This is what the skirt steak looks like. And this is a grilled skirt steak over here. Hanger steak. The hanger steak, it is also from the plate. And um, it is uh, actually from the diaphragm of the animal, right? So here you have the terms over here, steer, heifer. We have spoken about this earlier. So uh, it's a very, very, it's a, it's a V-shaped, it is a V-shaped uh, set of muscles. So somewhere over here, you have a V-shaped set of muscles hanging right below over here. And uh, it is a very tender steak, right? So which is why earlier, butchers would often keep it for themselves and put it on sale. This is what the hanger steak looks like. So you have uh, only one hanger steak per animal. So you would not have two, you would have only one hanger steak per animal over here. Flank steak. Flank steak, as pretty obvious, is from the flank. It is the flank over there. Yeah. Also, sometimes in different places of the world, somewhere it is called the bib, and somewhere it's called the diaper. Right? In Brazil, it's called the diaper, and in French, it is called the bib, because of its positioning, and that's how it is called. So it's a relatively long flat cut steak used in a variety of dishes, including London broil as an alternative to traditional skirt steak in fajitas, can be grilled, pan fried, broiled, braised, uh, and so on. So the grain, the meat fiber is very apparent flank, uh, flank steak because it comes from a very exercised part. That's what your flank steak looks like. And this is a grilled flank steak, which is used for them. Flap steak, it is from the bottom sirloin. So although the sirloin is one of the most prized part sirloin, the bottom sirloin is not as prized as the top sirloin. So um, from the bottom sirloin, you what you get is the flap steak. So flap steak, it's a low end. It's a low end, which means less expensive, Beef steak cut it comes from the bottom sirloin or the butt cut of the meat. Generally, very thin steak. Flap steak is sometimes called sirloin tips in New England. Yeah. So uh, typically, it is ground into hamburger. So uh, typically, anything which is does not meet the mark, they are ground. Yeah, hamburger, sausage meat, etc. Now that is what your flap steak. A round steak. It is from the round of uh, beef, and uh, you have what is called two cuts in the round. One is the eye of round and you have the bottom round and the top, top round. So you have these three cuts of round which are uh, uh, typical. It's a lean cut, which means less amount of fat as discussed earlier. Uh, so which is why uh, dry heat is not uh, the preferred method over here. It is typically moist heat is the method which is used 
that that is the uh, typical cut of meat uh, the typical preparation of cut for round steaks so they could also be thinly sliced and you know uh, first uh, dried and then smoked uh, to prepare a popular product called jerky which is had by itself so rump with a thick layer of accompanying fat so uh, the layer by itself doesn't have fat but the top above that you have uh, the fat covering of it above the rump and that is a priced that is pretty much priced in uh, south american countries particularly brazil and argentina they talk about it being very flavorful because of the fat So this is what a round steak looks like as you can see there is very less there is hardly any fat actually there is no fat to it that's visible full meat talking about the t-bone and boterhouse steak we have spoken about this before this is from the short line interesting part is you can see that there is a part of the tender line you see the thinner part of tender line it projects into the short line line right so when you cut a short line steak you are potentially cutting a part of the tender loin also uh, along with it yeah? uh, so depending upon which part it is coming from it would be either a t bone steak or a porterhouse steak the t bone and porterhouse steaks are steaks of beef coming from the short loin both steaks include a t shaped lumbar vertebra section of the abdominal uh, basically one of the sides we're talking about fine the t bone steak would average weigh about 300 grams and um, they could grow up to a maximum of 700 grams also which is the porter house or t bone steak could have could go up to uh, 700 grams also but this is what a t bone steak looks like now if you look at the shape of the bone over here this is the t shaped bone over here and this over here is the tender loin loin part of it which is a part of the cut so when you have cut across a part of the tender loin also is cut into it the t bone steaks are closer to the front and contains a smaller part of tender loin right this is a grilled t bone steak over here this on other hand is a porterhouse steak porterhouse steak although the uh, bone is similar yeah it is a little bit t shaped but now i would like you to have a note at the size of the tenderloin muscle over here this is a part of the tenderloin uh, muscle this is uh, much larger in a porterhouse steak than in a t bone steak so tenderloin of a porterhouse steak must be at least 1.5 so they have defined what the size is the the size of this it must be more than 1.5 inches across in diameter right while that of a t bone steak must be at least 0.5 inches so you have specification over here right yeah and this over here as you can see this is the uh, this is the part of the tender line that we are talking about which is more than uh, 1.5 inches across strip steak or strip loin steak a bone in strip steak with no tenderloin attached is sometimes called a shell steak or a strip loin steak so yeah so again this comes from the uh, uh, from the short loin by itself so over here if you were to remove the tenderloin part of it see if this part of it were to be totally removed if this part of it were to be totally removed from here then one was to slice it across then what you would get is the strip loin steak or the tenderloin or the uh, strip steak yeah this is what it looks like as you can make out over here you don't have that piece of tenderloin attached to it as we have discussed in the previous slides this is a grilled strip loin steak tenderloin as you can see it is below the sirloin and the short loin it is a layer below the sirloin and short loin and it is the most prized part of uh, any beef and uh, typically a tenderloin could grow up to 2 
2 kilos up to 2.5 kilos also for larger this is the shape of it and as you can see the tip of the pointed end you see at till up to here it is a part of the under the short line and below beyond that it is a part of the sir line so that's how it is so there are three parts of the tender line one is the butt end so this is called the butt end right and then we have the center cut so from here from from here till about here this part is the center cut and then you have the tail so from here till here you have the tail part of it so different parts have got different uses the butt end uh, is used for uh, carpaccio carpaccio is uh, sliced very thinly sliced very thinly sliced sections of the butt end almost wafer thin and it has had raw by itself carpaccio right and then you have the center cut which is for uh, steaks uh, in that you would have uh, typically the filet mignon tenderloin or chatrapura steak so you, uh, all these are typically about 180 grams is uh, the uh, size which is considered to be optimal for your uh, re regular tenderloin steak or uh, even filet mignon can be a little lesser. Chateaubriand steaks are larger. They can grow between 350 grams to 400 grams also, Chateaubriand steaks. The tail is very small and is not suitable for steaks because of the size. So from this thin part of it, how can you make any uh, steak? So uh, the, the tail of it is often used for other things. Very tender cut though, but it's not so suitable for steak. Tenderloin steak. 180 grams is standard size of the tenderloin steak. So this is what it looks like. If you see the tenderloin, when you cut it across, this is the kind of a cut that you get. I will relook at once again. That is your tenderloin. You slice it across. This is what it comes. And then when you grill it and cut it across, this is what the steak looks like. This over here is a medium done steak. Uh, if it were a little redder, then that would have been a rare steak. And then if it is uh, uh, the color uh, which is over here, the outside color, it would be called a well done steak. In this particular coloration, it is a medium uh, well done, medium done steak actually. Okay, and this so this one is an example of beef carpaccio which we have spoken. It is served over here with uh, grated parmesan cheese. You have olive, capers, rocket leaves, and filet mignon. Filet mignon is a delicate tender filet. It is taken from the smaller end of the tenderloin. Yeah. So the tail end, from the tail end, typically you would get the filet mignon. The tenderloin is the most tender cut. And um, The combined, the small weight given by any uh, steer, right, uh, less than 500 grams is the weight of the filet mignon. So the weight of this filet mignon will not be less than more than 500 grams. 500 grams is the max that we are looking at it. And it is cut into uh, sections which are, you know, about one to two inches and grilled and served how it is. Dry heat is the typical method for preparing a filet mignon, which could mean grilling, pan frying, pan frying, broiling, or roasting. All of these are suitable for filet mignon. That's what a filet mignon would look like after preparation. Again, over here, medium well done. Shank. So shank, as you know, is from the either the foreleg or the hind leg. Both of it is called shank. Also, buko is a typical example of it. Now this over here is the meat by itself, the shank meat cut across on the bone. And this is a prepared uh, uh, section of a prepared photograph of Osabuko. Yeah. So with that, we are through with uh, the carcass and identification of beef. 
a little long video i guess but uh, go through it carefully it has got many points where you require to pause the video and think more about it thank you so much